Hi everyone, my name is Andre and welcome to my channel. Today I'm giving you an infertility recommendation video. So I've been trying to do this video for a very, very, very long time, like two years. But that was around the time I was filming with a camcorder and I managed to lose the clips on a scan disc somewhere. I am not looking for them anywhere, anytime soon. I've just accepted that as this footage has been lost and I'm fine with it. Anyways, I'm not gonna do much with like two year old footage. So I am going to try to make my best talking about these books that I read almost two years ago. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. So today I'm going to talk about infertility representation in books. If you know me, you know I've been struggling with infertility for over 10 years, we successfully managed to get our son through artificial insemination. If you want to know more about my journey with infertility, I do have a video where I talk about like all of my journey and what we went through, which I'm not gonna re-talk about here, but I thought it would be an important topic to explore in books. So I've got a list of about 28-ish books that are supposed to have infertility rep in them. I managed to read five of them. One of them I read this year and the other four was in December 2022. Mind you, there's a lot of two week wait in titles of books on infertility. And uh, yeah, it's kind of confusing and annoying. I hate it. <laughs> but anyways, none of the books I've read have that title so we're fine for now but we'll see in the next one. So I'm gonna do three recommendations and two anti-regs because two of those books I did not enjoy, did not like the representation of infertility in them and I thought it would be a good idea to still talk about them because if it's something that you're looking for it might not be the right book for you. So let's start with the negative so the anti-regs and finish off on a positive note with the amazing books uh, that I do recommend. So the first book I want to talk about is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. First of all, Colleen Hoover is a bestseller author. She sells a lot and there's a lot of tropes that she uses in her books. She's very popular. A lot of people do like her writing and her books, which is fine, but I do not recommend her, especially for infertility. I am not gonna voluntarily pick up another book from her because I know I'm just gonna be mad and I'm gonna not like it. So I'm not gonna force it on myself. So in this one, you follow a couple that is going through a lot of things. Um, infertility is one of them and their, their couple isn't necessarily thriving because of that. And like infertility can break some couples and it, it does happen. I don't remember all everything that was in it. I do remember though that I, I didn't like the characters at all. And there was this like letters that her husband was writing to her and it was supposed to change her vision of everything and, and how she sees the world and stuff. And um, you end up reading those letters and it was so disappointing. <laughs> um, there was nothing in those letters that was wow or like a game changer or this changes everything no it changed nothing nothing of consistence was in those letters so yeah i i did not appreciate that i did not like how they communicated their relationship was toxic and one of the thing that i don't like that really triggers me when I read books on infertility is when people have comments and that's the same thing in real life. I do intend on doing um, 
another video where I talk about like things to say to someone who is going through infertility and uh, what not to say mostly. And this is one of those things. Adoption is not the same thing as infertility. A project of having a baby, like your own baby from your body, is not the same project as adopting a baby. And like those are two completely different things. And I get so mad when people think that one is the solution to the other. Adopting a baby is not a solution to infertility at all. It's something completely different and a lot of people are not equipped to adopt a baby or an older child, whatever. Like it comes with baggage, it comes with a lot of trauma and not everyone is equipped to deal with that. Also, it's not the same thing at all. When you go through infertility, you go through grief every month, every day, every week. You're going through this process of grief all over again, all the time. So it's it gets daunting, it gets tough, and your mental health is most likely gonna suffer from it. And it's hard sometimes to continue pushing through and having some motivation that it will eventually work. You cannot adopt if you haven't gone through the process of grieving, the fact that you're not gonna have a biological child. So like, it cannot be a solution. And that's what I feel like infertility rep is badly made. It's mostly when this happens, when there's talk about adoption as a solution to infertility. And that makes me so mad. And that happens in this book, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, no, I originally gave it a three stars and I'm really surprised. I thought it was a two star or a 2.5. And now that I'm thinking about it in 2022, I didn't write in Goodreads. Like if I had a 0.5 stars, I usually round it up a star higher, but I write down in the review part I, I write the actual rating of the book, but I don't think I did that in 2022. So I think it might have been a 2.5 stars because three is a good book, but just an okay book. This was not an okay book. I only remember frustration from this book. So yeah, I, I don't recommend this book. And the final anti-rec I'm going to talk to you about today is What Alice Forgot by Leanne Moriarty. This one, I gave it a two stars. I did not like this book at all. The book felt pointless because the, the infertility rep was not our, from our main character, but from her sister. And the question of adoption came around all the time, which was very annoying to me and the book was not it. So we follow this young girl, Alice, who divorced, who has two children, and she's leading her very successful life as a single mom. And she has an accident in her gym class and she forgets everything. She forgets that she divorced, she forgets a whole bunch of stuff. And I think the author was trying to make our character recognize what she lost and how she went wrong in her relationship but honestly it was too late i i don't get it like what was the point anyways i, I don't want to spoil it but um if you're interested in it but uh this did not make it for me i hated most of the characters and especially our main character and the infertility rep was really annoying the adoption stuff was so yeah i i don't recommend it especially if it's for the infertility rep. All right, so now I'm going to talk about some good books you can pick up if you're interested in some infertility representation. So the first one is The Art of Waiting on Fertility, Medicine and Motherhood by Belle Boggs. So this is a nonfiction book. I enjoyed it. I didn't. I don't own it. This one I borrowed from the library on my reader. And I enjoyed it for what it was. It was an okay book for me, but I didn't feel like it went in depth of many things from what I remember. And honestly, I don't remember much. Um, it was, I think, very surface level. 
it, it talked of certain aspects of infertility, but it is so broad. Not everyone deals with it in the same way. Not everyone has the same journey to it because we all have like specific things. And when you go through that process, the treatments and what and the next steps really depends on your personal case. So it's, it's a case on case by case analysis. So you can't really just go on and, and say everyone goes through this and everyone goes through that. No, some people will accept very early on that they're not going to have biological kids and they're actually really fine with it. And that's okay. And other people will not be okay with that and will struggle their whole life if they don't succeed to have a biological child. And that's their own grievance and both are valid. But I do think it's a good nonfiction book to pick up um, if you're interested in, in knowing more how it works. But just keep in mind that it's our author's journey and it's not like in everyone goes through the same thing type of. Um, but yeah, I, I do recommend this one because I think it's an easy one, but it is uh, supported by science literature, which is something that we're looking for uh, when we are looking into nonfiction. Uh, since it was a nonfiction, I didn't write this book. The next one I read is Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo. So this is a fiction book following a Nigerian woman who is struggling with infertility. And this book was so amazing. If you're looking for a good fiction book with infertility rep, this one is the first one I would pick up. It's so good. I gave it a five stars and it was a favorite book of mine of that year. And I, unfortunately, I don't own it. I, I borrowed it at the library, but it was that good. And I didn't rate books six stars at that time, but if I would have read it today, I would have given it a six stars for sure. I still think about this book so much still to this day. This young woman has gone through so many things and she feels so lonely in her own journey of infertility and and the desperation and it is so spot on. Strongly recommend. Um, yeah, it, this book really moved me and the rep was just amazing. The writing was amazing. Um, everything of this book is amazing. I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend. And finally, the last book I'm going to recommend today is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This one I just managed to finish in July. I gave it a 4.5 stars. So in here, we follow a family, the Richardson family who lives in Shaker Heights, which is a very perfect neighborhood where there's peace and everything's perfect all the time. And um, they do have a second, a secondary house that they do rent to this single mom with her teenage daughter. And she's an artist, she's, she's a photograph and she sells her art. And there's also some other characters with the Richardson's family's teenagers, as well as our, this other teenager and some other people. And I didn't understand like where it was going at first. I didn't understand like where's the, the infertility rep. It is in there. And I thought it was well done. I do not agree with what this character that goes through infertility was dealing, how she was dealing with things and what she chose to do, what actions she chose to do. But I can understand how realistic one would be desperate enough to take those actions. And I feel like the author really put on page the desperation of this character of wanting a child and grasping every little bit of hope she could get. Yes, and it's an amazing book all in all not only for the infertility rep, I think it was really well done. And the book in general is amazing for many reasons. But yeah, so I strongly recommend this one as well. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed these recommendations. If you've read any of these, please let me know. I would love to know what you thought about them. And if you have any other recs for me, I do still have a long list of books I want to pick up for um, some more recommendations in 
in infertility rep. So some more nonfiction and some more fiction books. So if you do have some titles for me, I would love to check them out. So leave them in the comments, like subscribe if you wish, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video and I will see you soon in the next one.